Recently, I've been getting lots of comments asking how I edited my smartphone smoothie b-roll, which I made back in May when I started out YouTube. Now, I'm diving back into the edit to show you my process for each shot. First, let's watch the b-roll with the editing timeline. 30 seconds stay at home b-roll challenge. Don't need any fancy equipment. Let's get b-roll. As usual, my edit started with the music. I put markers at every beat to time the action to the music. The structure of the edit was really simple. It follows the process of making the smoothie. With the broader story figured out, I spent much more time thinking about the flow between individual shots. The sequence starts and ends with me in the chair. And in editing, right away I noticed how bad the colors looked. So one of the first things I did was color grade. I adjusted things like the white balance, contrast, saturation, and the color tones to make it look much better. I made the shadows more blue and the highlights more red. I then copied those adjustments to every other shot of me in that chair. For the end of this shot, I had the phone fill the frame. By using a very short cross-dissolve transition, I faded smoothly into the next shot. I then put directional blur onto an adjustment layer, which applies its effects to every clip below it. This is something I'm going to do a lot in this edit, is add adjustment layers with blur that goes up and down with the peak at the moment of transition. In the next few clips, I'm washing my hands, and I wanted to add subtle transitions using the splashing water. So what I did was duplicate the next clip of the water splashing everywhere, move it over the previous clip, and create a mask on it. Normally when I use masking to crop a clip to one area, I feather it, which smooths out the edges. And that's what I did here. I animated that mask to move up from the bottom of the screen to cover the lens and smoothly transition to the next shot. For the next washing hands shot, I did a similar transition with the water fading out. I also added keyframes for the scale and rotation of this clip to create camera movement in the edit. Keyframes are like set points that allow you to animate properties over time. For the banana chop, which happens at the big beat drop, I speed ramped both clips so that the point of fastest motion was at the transition. Then I added a blur layer and used keyframes just like I did before. This blur, the fast motion, and the fact that both shots are panning down helps hide the cut. For the pair shot, I made it into a boomerang like on Insta or TikTok. The way you edit this is speed ramping, which in Premiere is called time remapping. I speed ramped so the slowest motion was at the cut, which is the point of a boomerang because you want it to slow down and then go in reverse. I then duplicated the clip with all of these speed ramp changes and set it to reverse speed. Putting the reversed one after the forward one creates the final edit. For the shot with the strawberry up in the air, all I did was add motion blur in After Effects. You can check out my video on how to edit motion blur in the top corner. At the end of the shot of me throwing the berry, I had a pan down transition to the blender clip. I extended the berry clip over the start of the blender clip and added a feathered mask that followed the motion down that already existed in both of those shots. For the super fast strawberry cuts, I had nine clips that were timed exactly to the fast beats of the song. I adjusted the position, rotation, and scale of each clip so the blender stayed in roughly the same spot. Here are those transformations alone. Next, I used content-aware fill to cover up the empty areas near the edges. You can tell in this one it looks bad, but by placing motion blur on top, it's mostly hidden. This is the final result. The next shot is a slow motion shot of shaking the raspberries into the blender, and this I think is an important moment in pacing. 
I decided to have this shot in slow motion and last longer to balance out the pacing of the video. It's important to mix the timing up so that your viewer doesn't get bored and they can follow along with what's happening. For the shot from above the blender, I used After Effects point tracking stabilization. I locked on to one of the strawberry seeds as the point to track. You can check out my other editing tutorials to see the full process of how to point track stabilization. In the next two shots, I decided to do a zoom transition from the wide shot of the blender to the tight one. I had these two shots and I transitioned to them using an adjustment layer. I added a transform effect to the adjustment layer and then I changed the scale of the clips so that they matched at the exact middle and they filled the frame exactly. So after the blender shot, I added another pan down transition and the next shot was the most complicated edit by far in the whole video. This was the smoothie pouring on the camera shot. I made a whole video on how I edited this one shot because it was so involved, so check that out at the top right. Basically, I combined two shots, the smoothie pouring and a picture of the glass. When you blend multiple clips, it's called a composite. I used a bunch of masks and effects and ended up with six layers in After Effects that made up the final shot. I did all of that in After Effects, but what I did do in Premiere was add more motion blur and color grade. The smoothie looked a weird color to me, so I went at it in the hue saturation curves. In the hue versus saturation, I selected the red hues, and then increased the saturation of only the red colors in the image. Then I decreased the saturation of only the blues. In the hue versus hue panel, I also selected the reds and made them more of a purple hue. I then made those same selected colors brighter. That gave me most of the look that I wanted, but then I did some more tweaks to the brightness, contrast, and saturation of the entire image, not just specifically some colors. After the smoothie pouring, I had a fill the frame transition, which I did with a simple cross dissolve and the colors matched up very nicely. Next, I had a stop motion of pictures that I took timed to the beats. I transformed each picture so that the glass lined up with the previous one. It's really easy to make a video partially transparent in editing, so you can line up points in the frame with other clips too. For the second last shot, I rotated and stabilized to the top of the glass. Then I filled in the bottom left corner and added motion blur. Finally, I wanted to create a whip pan transition to the last shot. Back in Premiere, I put the cut when there was the most movement, and I added yet another adjustment layer with directional blur. The pan was done in camera, and the smoothie is moving in the same direction, which together make the transition feel seamless. This is the final result. For sound effects, my goal was to create flow between the shots by having overlapping sound effects, and to help enhance the visuals. Let's listen to only the sound effects. 30 seconds stay at home B-roll challenge. Don't need any fancy equipment. Let's get B-roll. Okay, so that is how I edited my smartphone smoothie b-roll. It was actually the first video I made for YouTube, but I had never made an editing breakdown before it because at that point I didn't know how to yet. So I hope this long overdue tutorial is helpful and thank you for watching.